And up here, we have the still burning fire of Semele, who we shall, we shall discuss in a few moments. Thebes was built by Cadmus. Cadmus was the son of King Agnor. King Agnor had sent his sons out to find their sister Europa, who had, like many maidens of Greek times, kept company with Zeus, the king of the gods. <laughs> Europa had been taken off to Crete by Zeus, but no one knew this. So Agnor told his sons to all separate to find their sister, and a standard admonishment for most parents, don't come home without your sister. After two years, Cadmus began to despair of ever going home. So he did what all good young Greeks did when they were troubled in those times. He went and visited an oracle. The oracle said, stop looking for your sister. She's fine. The gods have something else they want you to do. He was told to go out and find himself a white cow that had never been yoked and never been milked. And he was to follow that cow until it collapsed. And there he was to build a city. Not too surprisingly, almost as soon as he left the oracle, he and his men found a white cow that had never been yoked and never been milked. They goaded it on day and night, not allowing it to eat or rest until Surprisingly, it collapsed. Coincidentally, near about Kitharon. <clears throat> Cadmus sent his men up on Mount Kitharon to find themselves wood and water to prepare a sacrifice while he himself divided up the cow with the God's share and the share separate. The men found wood, they found water, they also found a cave, and inside this cave they found a monstrous great serpent, a pet of Ares, the god of war. Needless to say, when Cadmus went looking for his men, there was not much of them left to find. Cadmus being the classic Greek hero, fucked the serpent. And because he had better weapons than his men, he won. This, of course, angered Ares, who then cursed him by saying, A serpent you have slain, a serpent you shall become. But Athena, goddess of wisdom, intervened and told Cadmus that he was to pull the teeth out of the serpent and to plant them. Cadmus didn't order argue with gods all that often, so he did what he was told. And up from the ground almost immediately sprang an army of armed men who began marching towards Cadmus. Cadmus, not knowing what their intent was, and his spear still being stuck in the serpent, he uh, grabbed the only available weapon he had, a rock, and threw it among them. They, hearing this sound in amongst them, feared a surprise attack and turned on themselves and started fighting, till only five of them remained. At which point, Athena called a halt to the combat. She told Cadmus that these five men would help him build his city, but in payment for the services the gods had done him, he owed them seven years of devout worship. Cadmus did as he was told. And after seven years, the gods came down from Olympus to celebrate the marriage of Cadmus, now king of Thebes. He built the city after all. And Harmonia, the daughter of Ares, the god of war. Harmonia and Cadmus had four daughters. Gawe, Otene, Eno, and Semele. Agawe was given in marriage to Echion. He was the finest and best of the five men that remained of the earthborn race. They had a son, Pentheus, who took over as king of Thebes when his grandfather, Cadmus, stepped down. Otene was given to Orestes in marriage, and they had a son, Actius. Actius was a great hunter. Actia boasted about how great he was. He said he was even better than the goddess of the hunt herself, Artemis. Artemis took umbrage at this. Artemis took revenge. Artemis turned him into a stag and sent him upon Mount Githron, where she then had his pack of 40 hounds hunt him down and rip him to shreds. <laughs> Eno, we don't know if she was ever married. Semele was the youngest and 
most beautiful of the daughters. And as I stated earlier, as with so many young, beautiful maidens in Greece, she attracted the attention of Zeus. She and Zeus had relations, and Semele found herself with child. She told her sister, she told me, she told her father. Zeus was the father of this child. No one believed her in deeds. Her sister said it was just some man claiming to be a god. Hello. However, Hera, the queen of the gods, did believe Semele. She knew her husband. She was very upset, decided she would take revenge upon this young maiden who had uh, shared the favors of her husband. So she went down into Thebes disguised as Semele's childhood nurse. She told Semele that uh, it was very possible that any man could claim to be a god, but only one, Zeus, could reveal himself in all his glory to her and that she should ask him to do that the next time he visited. This would prove, of course, to her sisters and all of Thebes that she was not a liar. Semele did that, calling upon a promise Zeus had made to do anything for her. Zeus, of course, tried to get her to change her mind, but she was resolute. So Zeus revealed himself in all his glory, which, of course, includes thunder, lightning, and fire. Needless to say, Semele was burned to a crisp instantly. However, Zeus, being quick thinking, reached down and from her still burning corpse, pulled forth the child from the womb and made his way to Mount Olympus. Zeus realized that Hera had to be behind her and realized that this child was still in danger, even though the mother was dead. And it was not yet time for this child to be born, so the story is told that Zeus slid open his own thigh, placed the child therein, and sewed it up with golden threads. After a while, having absorbed all the godliness from the king of the gods, and when it was time to be born, Dionysus emerged from his father's thigh. Thus, Dionysus was called the twice-born, once from his mother's womb, once from his father's thigh. Zeus realized Dionysus was still in trouble. He was an infant and... Hera would have her revenge, so he arranged for her to be spirited away to lands of the east. Him. So Dionysus is there, he's being raised by maidens. He realizes that he's got these powers, he's told he's a god, he's told who his parents are, and he starts a cult. He is worshipped as a god of wine, fertility, poetry, and playwright. He gathers around him Bacchus and Maenads, the frenzied warrior women of his cult. And when he felt the time was right, that he could resist the manipulations of Hera, he decided to return to Greece, calling forth his Maenads to take up their thyrsus, their pine cone, tipped wands with ivy wrapped around them, the only weapons they carried, and come with them. The head of this army, he came to Greece. His intent was to first stop in Thebes. There, he would do reverence to his mother's grave in her hometown. And he would go from there into the rest of Greece, making his name known and gathering followers. Such was his intent. When he got to Thebes, though, he found his mother's name reviled. She had obviously lied about who the father of her child was, and Zeus had punished her. What's the story given out? That's why there was still this burning corpse, carefully segregated away by canvas, to keep everyone a reminder not to lie about the gods. Dionysus, as I said, is a god of wine, fertility, poetry, and playwriting, all great things. But this god of joy was very, very angry. Good people to tell you anything more would be to tell you what this play's about. What's about to happen upon this stage. And I would not do that to the cats. I will, though, thank each and every one of you for coming out here on this Sunday morning to share this with us. We would thank the Nelson Atkins Museum and the Parks and Rec Department for their help in all these years. Thank you on behalf of the cast crew, Gorilla Theater Productions, for coming to today's show and for supporting Kansas City Theater. Thank you.
smoldered with the still living flame of Zeus's fire, that immortal cruelty that Hera wreaked upon my mother. Cadmus does well to keep this ground in the fire of the Lord. He consecrated in his daughter's name, and I have decked it down with sprays of young pine. of Lydia, Phrygia, fertile and gold, I traveled first to the sun-smitten Persian plains, the harsh Median country, both the Arabia and the whole tract of the Asian coast, where mingled swarms of Greeks and Orientals live in vast, magnificent cities. And before reaching this, the first city of Palestine had visited, and already in all those lands of the East performed my dances and set forth my rituals make my Godhead manifest in mortal man. said what they should have been the last to say, that I, Dionysus, am not Zeus's son. That my mother, Semele, being with child, they said by some mortal, obeyed her father's prophecy, and ascribed to Zeus the loss of her virginity, and they loudly claimed that this lie was the sin for which Zeus would provide. Oh, 
population of thieves. To the last woman, I have sent raving from their homes. Now, side by side with Cadmus' daughters, one and all sit roofless on the rocks under the silver pines. For thieves, I'll be reluctantly, must learn in full this lesson. That my Bacchic worship is a matter as yet beyond her knowledge and experience. And I must vindicate my mother, Samele, by manifesting myself before the human race as the divine son whom she bore to immortal Zeus. Son of his eldest daughter, Yahweh. Pythias is a fighter against God. He defies me, excludes me from libations, never names me in prayer. Therefore, I will demonstrate to him and to all thieves that I am a God. And when I have set matters in order here, I will pass on to another place to manifest myself. But meanwhile, if thieves, in anger, tried to bring the Bogan soul by force from the mountain, I myself will join that army of women possessed and lead them from that. That is why I have changed my form and taken the likeness of a man. Ah, my band of worshippers, women whom I have brought from lands of the east, have called back to Lydia to be with me and share my travel. Raise the music of your own.
and he entices our young girls with his bacchic mysteries, spends days and nights consorting with them. Once, let me get that fellow inside my walls. I'll cut his head from his soul. <laughs> and that will stop him drumming with his nurses, tossing his long hair. He's the one, this foreigner, who says that Dionysus is a god, who says that he was sewn up in Zeus's thigh. Well, the truth about Dionysus is that he's dead, burnt to a cinder by lightning, along with his mother, because she says Zeus lay with her. Now, whoever this man may be, is not his arrogance and outrage. Has he not earned a rope around his neck? Why, look, another miracle. Here's Tiresias, the prophet, in a bond skin, and my mother, father, a black one with the fiddle on. Why, there's a sight for laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. I am ashamed two men of your age with so little sense of decency. Come, oh, you're my grandfather. Throw down the ivory. Get rid of the dirt. No. You were the one who was in the By introducing a new god, you hope to advance your work to collect more fees for inspecting sacrifices. Well, listen, your gray hairs are your protection. Otherwise, you would be in prison now with these crazy females for promoting pernicious practices. And as for these women, I tell you this, wherever the sparkle of sweet wine adorns their feet, no good shall come from such bucking ceremonies. Have you no reverence, sir? No piety? Dionysus from her. 
in time. Because the ancient words for pledge and five are similar, people confused them. And the pledge that Zeus gave to Hera became transformed as time went on into the tale that Dionysus was sewn up in Zeus' shard. And this god is a prophet. The bucket ecstasy spread the whole throne prophetic. When he feels there is the human body, he gives those so possessed power to foretell the future. In Ali's father, too, to Dionysus at his death. Sometimes an army, weapon, and drawn up for battle has fled in wild panic before he filled with rage. This too is an ecstasy said by Dionysus. I, and the time will come when you shall see him leaping amidst the blazing torches over the twin big leaves, uh -huh. waving aloft and brandishing his body star as all Hellas exalts him. Pantheus, heed my word. You rely on force, but it is not force that governs human affairs. Do not mistake for wisdom that opinion that rises from a fixed mind. Welcome this God to Thebes. Celebrate his right. Offer libations to him. Dionysus will not compel women to be gentle. Since in all matters, self-control resides in our own nature. You should consider this. For in Bacchus River, as elsewhere, a woman will be safe from corruption if her mind is safe. Think of this too. You can stand before the city gates, and extol the name Pentheus. You rejoice. So too, I think, are the gods glad to receive honor. Uh-oh. Well, I am. And can be you up. But where are the eyes of you? And join the dance. Yeah. Oh, it's very yeah. here. But it yeah. is like And no words of yours shall lure me to fight the dark. We will throw this down at you once in a while. has given you good advice. Don't pray God pious tradition. Live with us. All your wits are blown to the wind. Your sense is foolish. Even if, as you say, Dionysus is not a god. Well, let him have your acknowledgement. My Royally. <laughs> that our Savelli may have the honor of having born a god. And credit to us and to our whole family. Oh. Remember too the miserable state of Axion, who was devoured by how he himself had bred. But he filled the mountains with the boat that he was a greater warrior than Artemis herself. Oh, don't share his faith, my son. Come, let me crown you with the wreaths of ivy. Oh, join us in worshiping the God. Oh, go to your black and Christ oh. and don't wipe off your crazy color oh. on me. But I will punish that man who has been your friend. Go someone quickly. Switch the scene of argument. Smash it with crowbars. 
top of the wall. Throw all of these things in wild confusion. Turn the whole place upside down. Think it's holy frippery the hurricane winds. This sacrilege will sting him more than anything else. And the rest of you go. Come to country and track down that effeminate foreigner who plagues our land with lecturing, fouls our women with this new disease. And once you catch him, tie him up and bring him here to me. I'll deal with him. He shall be stoned to death. <laughs> Bill wish he never brought his bucket Christ to thee.
He is near at hand and sees what is done to me. Indeed? Where is he then? Not visible to my eyes. Beside me, you being a blasphemer, see nothing. Get hold of him. He's mocking me in the whole city. Do not find me. I warn you. I am saved, and you are mad. My word overrules yours. I tell you, bind him fast. You know not what you do, who you are. Uh -oh. Ooh. Pythias, son of Echion, and the Galway. The name for the calamity. It fits you well. Take him away and lock him in my stable, where he can stay staring at darkness. You can dance in there. And as for these women you brought as your accomplices, I will either send them to the slave market to be sold or keep them in my own household to work the looms. And that will stop their fingers drumming on tambourine. Oh. I will go. Nothing can touch me that is not ordained. But I warn you, Dionysus, whom you say is dead, will come in swift pursuit to avenge this sacrilege. You're putting him in prison when you lay hands on me.
shafts of snow. And what news is this? What urgent message do you bring? I have seen the holy Vaca, who like a flight of spears went streaming bare limb. Frankly, how good to see 
I have come with the intention of telling you, my lord, and the rest of the city of strange and terrible doings, things beyond all wonder. But, but first, I would learn whether I may speak freely of what is going on there, or if I should trim my words. I, I fear your hastiness, my lord, your anger, your too potent royalty. Oh, for me, fear nothing. Say all that you have to say. Anger should not grow hot against the innocent. The more dreadful your story of these rocky rights, the heavier punishment I will inflict upon this man who has enticed our women to their evil ways. At dawn's day, when first the sun gray warmed the earth, my herd of cattle was slowly climbing towards the high pastures, and there I saw three separate companies of women. The leader of one company was a Conaway. Your mother, a Galway, was head of the second, Ego the third. And they, they all lay relaxed and quietly sleeping. Some rested on beds of pine needles, others pillows of oak leaves. But they lay just as they had thrown themselves down to the ground. But modestly, not as you told drunk with wine or flute music, seeking the solitary woods for the pursuit of love. Now when your mother, Galway, heard the horned cattle bellowing, she stood upright among the Bacchae and called them to stir themselves from sleep. And they took the strong sleep from their eyes and left to their feet. Oh, they were sights of marvelous. For modest women, women, both old and young, girls who are married, first they let their hair fall free over their
from limb to some rim, not level, tossed high and low, bags of flesh hung from fine branches, dripping blood. Oh, each one moment felt a proud maid, hot in their horns, next to the world, falling down, dragged down by the hands of frozen dogs, and they stripped the flesh from the bodies back to the more royal eyes. Like over the surface of the ground. They scoured the plain which stretches off to his face. And near the rich crops were beef. And like an enemy force, they fell in Hysia, the near thing. Two villages on the left. They ransacked them both. They snatched babies out of their houses. Any plunder which they carried on their shoulders stayed there without straps. Nothing fell to the ground, not bronze, nor iron. They carried fire on their heads, yet their soft hair was not burnt. The villagers, enraged at being so plundered, took up arms to resist. Then, my lord, But the women, hurling their thirsts us like a spear, felt wounds. In short, they turned those men to flight. Then they returned to where they had started from, to the place where the gods had caused the fountains to flow, and they washed off the blood. Snakes licked clean the stains until their cheeks shone. No. So, Master, no. whoever this no. community may be, no. receive him in this land. His powers are manifold. <laughs> but chiefly, no. as I hear, no. he gave to men the vine to cure their sorrows. And without wine, neither love nor any other pursuit of pleasure will work for us. Yet I will say it. There is no greater fraud than Dionysus! Oh. Stuck <laughs> <laughs> arrogance advances on us like a sweating fire. Disgrace us before all help. We must act now. Go quickly to the election gate. Tell all my men who carry shields, heavy or light. All my riders on fast horses. All my archers with their twanging bows to meet me there for an onslaught on these maniacs. This is beyond all fear. You must let women go to God. I refuse to give me your deed for what I say. I'm taking you away. Yet still, despite your wrongs to me, I warn you, stay here quietly. Do not take up arms against the gods. Dionysus will not tolerate an attempt to drive his worshippers to their holy will. I will not have you instruct me. You have escaped your chains. Now be content, or must I punish you again? <laughs> I would control my rage and sacrifice to him if I were you. Rather than take against the gods, <laughs> and you are going to make your rage and rage. I'm a sacrifice. Yes! I'm a sacrifice. Wholesale! As they deserve! I'm a sacrifice. Your army will be put to flight. What a disgrace for bronze shields to be routed by those women's wands. How can I deal with this impossible foreigner? In prisoner I have nothing to make all the time. My friend, a happy settlement may still be found. How? Must I be a slave to my own slave women? I will, using no weapons, bring those women here. <laughs> Hear that for the God's sakes? You're playing me some trick. What trick? If I'm willing to save you on my skill. You've planned this with them so that the rituals can go on. Indeed, I have planned this. Not with them, but with the God. Bring out my armor! That is enough from you. Wait. <laughs> Do you want to see those women when they sit together up in the hills? Why, yes. For that, I'd give away some of gold and 
What made you fall into this great desire to see? Well, it would cause me distress to see them drunk with wine. And yeah, you would gladly witness the distressing sight. Of course, if I could sit quietly under the pine. No, they would track you. They would kill you, even if you go there secretly. Openly then. Yes, what you say is very true. Then you will undertake to go. Shall I be? Yes, leave me there at once. I am impatient. But first, you must dress yourself in a fine linen gown. Why in a linen gown? Must I then change my sex? In case they kill you, if they see you, there is a man. Again, you are right. How do you think of everything? My life is inspired me with that thought. <coughs> How can your suggestion best be carried out? I will come indoors with you myself and dress you. What? Dress me? In women's clothes? But I would be ashamed. Do you want to see the mine ads? Are you less eager now? <laughs> what kind of dress did you say you would put on? First, I will adorn your head with lots of flowing hair. And, and after that, what style of costume shall I have? Well, I think a full length robe. And on your head shall be a snood. And, and besides these, is there anything else you'll put on me? Or a dappled blonde skin about you. A thyrsus in your hand. I could not bear to trust myself in women's clothes. <laughs> if you join battle with my head, you will my clothes. <laughs> How will I get through the city without being seen?
that's true right here, at least on the right leg by this side, but on the left, the gal hangs up the heel. <laughs> so surely got me chief among your friends when you witnessed the mine at unexpected modesty. Oh, well, all tied to hold my thirsts in, in my right hand, so, or in my left. You look more like a box than your right. And raise it at the same time as your right foot. I'm glad to see you so changed in mind. So, could I lift up on my own shoulders the whole weight of Mount Kitharan and all the women dancing there? You could, if you so wished. The mind you had before was sickly. Now your mind is just as it should be. Oh, shall I take crowbar? Or should I put my shoulder under the rock and heave the mouth of the right long? Oh, come now. Do not destroy the dwelling of the dance in the quiet place of the man since the play is mine. You're right. We must not use force to overcome those women. I shall hide among the pines. Pines? Oh, yes, yeah, you'll hide. And find the proper hiding place for one who comes by stealth to spy on foggy rights. Why, uh, yes. I think they are there now in their hidden nest. <coughs> all the past <coughs> problems in the prison of love. What you are going to look for is that very thing. Perhaps you will catch them. Uh? You're not first caught yourself. Now, maybe to the central streets of the I am the one man who dares do this. One man alone. You agonize for thieves. Therefore, it is your destined ordeal that awaits you now. Come with me. I will bring you safely to the place. Another shall conduct you back. My mother, yes? The sight for all to witness. Yes. Just in I go. You will return, born high. Well, magnificent. In your own mother's arms. Oh, you insist that I be spoiled. What kind of spoiling? Yet I win what I deserve. Yes. You are a man to make fear. Therefore, fearful shall be your end. In the end, they shall lift your fame up to the height of heaven. Agawe, and you, her sisters, daughters of Cadmus, stretch out your arms. See, I am bringing this man to his great battle, and I promise shall be victorious. What more shall happen? The event will show.
sun glorious throughout Hellas. Home of the Sidonian king who in this soil plants the dragon fed for an harvest. How I weep for you. Though I am only in attendance, I suffer your fate. Are you from the mountain? From the black he cries? What news? And she all of a is dead. Romans, you are defying Romans revealed! Woman, what was that you said? Do you insult when such a cruel fate has overtaken our king? I am no Greek. I, I sing my joy God. in a foreign tune. No more do I cower in terror of prison. Yet, to rejoice at the accomplishment of such horrors is not right. Tell us everything then. This tired king bent on cruelty. How did he die? When we had left behind the outlying parts of Thebes and crossed the Pacifus, we began to climb toward the outlands of Kithron. In a grassy glade, we kept our talk and our footsteps as quiet as possible so as to see without being seen. But we found ourselves in a valley full of stream cliffs on either side. Just below that, in the branching pines, the miners had their hands in their happy hats. Some of them twining a fresh crown of ivy leaves <laughs> were thirsts. Others, gay as fillies loosed from painted yokes, were singing holy bacchic songs, each answering the other. And the assault out of this, he said, Strange! From where we stand, my eyes cannot make out these so called worshippers. But if I shall climb a pine tree on that cliff there, I'll a few of their shameful practices. When I saw that Florida do an amazing thing, he took hold of a pine tree's top, soaring down, down, down to the dark earth. It was bent in a circle as a bow is bent, as a wheel's curve drawn to the compass. Bends the rims to its own shape. That fawn took hold of a pine tree and bent it down to the other, a thing no mortal man could do. He then slipped his own pine tree and he began to let it spring upright, slipping it through his head suddenly, that the pinky should not be flung off. The pine tree straightened and soared to the soaring sky, bearing my mast seated astride, so that he was more clear to the Mayanats than they were to him. Just coming into view on his high perch went out of the sky a voice. And I suppose that Florida was nowhere to be seen. Or, women, here is the man who has made a mock and and my only rights to punish him. In the very moment, the voice of the flash of the fire stretched between the earth and the high heaven. The air goes down. The air goes high and being beast. The women, not having distinctly coupled with themselves, then came a second word to man. As soon as Catus and daughters recognized the clear thing of the the speed of dust they darted forward from the park by Athens, the torrential valley of the rocks they were leaping on. Then, seeing Pythias crouched high in the pine tree, they began to climb the cliff which towered opposite, and violently flung it with pieces of rock, and those of the pine tree which they hurled as javelins, and some, some even went to the air all around their rest the aim fell short. The trees like baffled all their eagerness. Well, Kennedy. Well, they tore off branches alone. With these, tried to rise up the trees. For all the struggles of men with no success, the Galway cried out, Cut my ass! Stand in the circle around the tree and take hold of it. We must catch this climbing tree. So they will throw the seed of death to the Zionists. Mother, he cried out, touching her cheek. Desire your own son, Pentheus, whom you bore to Etchion. Mother, have mercy on me. I have sinned, but I am still your own son. Do not take my life. She 
she took hold of his left arm and his wrist and his elbow. She set her foot against his wrist. She tore his arm off by the shoulder. Her strength of her did it. The god filled her and made it easy. And then a Conaway joined her and began tearing at his flesh. And then I know joined her and began tearing at his flesh. A single and continuous yellow race. Pentheus shrieking out his wife was her finish. The women howling and crying. What did we care about? No arm and other foot. The boots still laced on it. His ribs were stripped of claw. The queen of women's head was thick with his red blood. Tossing, crashing, and blazing Pentheus' flesh. His body lies. Mother, she carries his poor head, fixed on her thesis point, openly of which hit her on the pathway, thinking at the head of a young girl. His left and sisters dancing among the mine ads. Herself comes here inside these walls, exulting in her hideous prey, shouting out to Bacchus, calling him her fellow hunter, a partner in the kill, a comrade in the victory. <laughs> Bacchus will give up in a dance to this war. Now, I must go to some place far away from these boys before a Galway returns. A sound of a humble heart that reverences the gods of Nazareth. The same virtue is wise. City of Seven Gates to famous thieves whose citizens slighted me, denied my divinity, oh. refused my ritual dances. Now the royal house is overthrown. They reap the fruit of impious folly. The city streets tremble in guilt as every citizen repents too late his blindness and his blasphemy. Foremost in sin was Pentheus, who not only scorned my claims, but put me in fetters and insulted me. Oh. Therefore death came to him in the most shameful manner, at his own mother's hands. This fate he justly earned, for no god can see his worship scorned, and hear his name profaned, and not take vengeance to the utmost limit. Thus man may learn that gods are more powerful than they. Agawa and her sisters must immediately depart from Thebes. Oh! Their exile will be just penance for the pollution which this blood has wrought. 
with such a piety that such offense could appear before the city's altars is an offense to piety. Now, Cadmus, hear what suffering fate appoints for you. You will transmute your nature and become a serpent. Oh, no! Your wife, Harmonia, whom her father, Ares, gave to you, a mortal, likewise shall assume the nature of beasts and live as a snake. The oracle of Zeus foretells that you shall, at the head of a horde of barbarians, drive forth the pair of heifers yoke, and with your countless army destroy many cities. But when they plunder Loxus's oracle, you shall find a miserable homecoming. <laughs> However, Ares shall at last deliver both you and Harmonia, and grant you immortal life among the blessed gods. I who pronounce these fates of Dionysus, begotten not by a mortal father, but by Zeus. If you had known me and chosen wisdom when you would not, you would have lived in wealth and safety, having the son of Zeus your friend. Oh, we have sinned, Dionysus, have mercy on us. You know too late. You did not know me when you should. We acknowledge this, but your, your revenge is merciless. And rightly, I am a god, and you insulted me. Gods should not be like mortals in vindictiveness. But all of this, my father Zeus ordained from the beginning. Oh, oh father, I'll say this to me. Exile! Oh, <laughs> then why postpone a fate which is inevitable? <laughs> Misery has overtaken all of our hearts. <laughs> you, your sister, <laughs> and your old unhappy father. I must go forth from home and live in barbarous lands. <laughs> it is foretold, moreover, that I, that I must lead a mixed barbarian horde to Hellas, and my wife. <laughs> Harmonia, Ares' daughter, and I must take the lowly, brutish form of serpents. <laughs> and I will lead her thus at the head of an armed force to <laughs> desecrate the tombs and temples of our native land. And I am to find no refuge from this curse. I may not even cross the downward. And I, and I go to exile, Father, I tell them far from you. Oh, do not cling to me as a young swan, cling fondly to the old, helpless to fight with age. Oh, where can I die my comfort, homeless in exile? I do not know. Your old father is no more. It is a cruel tyranny in this God that sends against your house such cruel punishment. Stray, it is. Not stray. The citizens despised his claim, and you and they. Put him to open shame. Father, I weep for you. And I for you, my daughter, and your sisters too. And your suffering. <laughs> oh. Father, farewell. I bid you, poor child. Farewell. And yet I cannot see how you can. Farewell! <laughs> no, I go. To leave my sisters by the hand. To share my wretchedness in a foreign land. Gods, take me to a place where all that Catheron may not see my face. No, I, Catherons, I have had my fill.
spell of mountain ecstasy. Take from me, you will, my holy ivy wreath. All that reminds me how I serve that God. Gods manifest themselves in many forms, and by their design bring men upon us to surprise the ends. The things we thought would happen do not happen. The unexpected God makes possible what no man expected. That is what has happened here today, and so it will play. play. out and sharing with us our ninth annual Greek show for Grill Theater. I'd right. like to thank uh, David Bloomy, the uh, director and also the artistic director of Grill Theater. Look for us at the Allen's Theater in September in which we'll be staging our uh, inaugural Dramatist Festival, which will be The Southern Man, written by Martin English, as well as The Feast by Brian Colley. Uh, later on during the Halloween, we will be doing Plan 9 from Outer Space, and as well as RER by Carol Kopeck in December. Again, next year we'll be doing the 10th Annual Grill Theater, uh, the Greek show, in which we'll be presenting Helen. And by the way, folks, without you, we would not exist again. Thank you. Woo!